Hi guys, so in this lesson we're going to look at memcached. So obviously the options for scaling are dependent on which database engine you use. So for memcached we can add nodes to a cluster and we can scale vertically so we can change the node type. Now when you do that you actually have to go and manually create a new cluster. Now I mentioned manually because with Redis there are options for having Redis actually automatically deploy a new cluster, migrate your data, and then cut you over. That's not the case with memcached, so you do have to actually go and create another cluster with a different node type. So this is what a memcached cluster looks like. You can have multiple partitions of your data, so each node is a separate partition of your data. And that means if you lose a node, obviously you, you lose the data that's on that particular partition. Now you can cluster them across availability zones, but again, there's no replication going on here. There's no replicas and there's no multi-AZ failover. So let's go to the console and have a look at creating a memcached cluster. I'm in the console, let's find Elastacache and we're gonna click on get started now. And it's defaulted to Redis. I'm gonna to change to memcached. I'm going to call this my memcached. So we now have some options, the ports defaulting for us. We can see it's got a parameter group and then a node type. Now I do want to change the node type. For the free tier, we can use a T2 micro or we can use a T3 micro. So either way, I'm just going to choose a T2 micro, click on save, and you now get to choose the number of nodes. Well, I'm happy with just one. So I'm going to keep one node. And if we go down to advanced settings, you can see there's some more options here for if you wanted to change VPCs, change subnet groups. You can choose the availability zones that you want your cluster to go into. And you can also select the zones uh, for each of your nodes. We've only got one node, but you could specify uh, which zone each node goes into if you had multiple nodes. So we'll leave that as it is. You can see there's also a maintenance window here. So you can either choose your own maintenance window like RDS or leave it to no preference and it's gonna do it for you. So I'm happy with these options. Let's just create this cluster. Now, because I specified the advanced settings here, what I do need to do is specify a subnet group. So let's just call this my subnet group as it suggested. And we can then carry on. I don't think I need a description. So that's gonna create our cluster. And it can take several minutes to create your cluster. So you might wanna just make a cup of tea and, and then come back once it's ready. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to look at how we can scale the cluster. Now, you'll want to open this file. So in your code and files directory, find the Amazon Elastacache directory and this document called Scaling Elastacache. And what we'll do is we're gonna run this first command here where we're gonna use the modify cache cluster API to modify our cluster and add an additional node. So that didn't take long, took a few minutes and my cluster is now available. Now the thing to note about Elastacache is that usually when your cluster's in a modifying state, you can't do anything with it. So you have to wait for it to become available and then you can make updates. So we can see some information about our cluster here. And if we click, we can then see the nodes and we've only got one node at this stage. Under actions, you can reboot nodes copy the endpoint, and we can see some metrics down here, which we'll talk about in another lesson. So I've got my cluster ready, and what I want to do now is I'm going to go back to this file, and I'm gonna copy this command. So what you'll need to do is you need to make sure that you've got your cluster ID set correctly. So I called my cluster my-memcached, and I'm gonna to change to two nodes, so I'm gonna add an additional node and then I've got my region specified. So the key thing to note here is we're using this modify cache cluster API. Definitely comes up as an exam question. So just remember that this is the way that you do it. So let's go to a command line and we're going to run this command. Pasted the command in, let's hit enter. And we get this return response. So this response is good. The cluster state has gone to modifying and it's going to add an additional node to the group. So let's go back and have a look in the console. So back in the console, it might take a few minutes for the node to show up. Nope, it's there straight away. 
So we can see that node is being created. And if we go back up to the cluster level, we're now in a modifying state. So that's how you can scale your Elastacache Memcache DE cluster. So in other words, what we're doing, remember, if we just go back to the slides, is we're adding additional nodes and each of those nodes becomes a partition of data. So the data on here is gonna be different to here. It's not replicated between nodes. You just then have to point your application to store data on different nodes. And those nodes can be across availability zones as well. Now, the next command I have here is actually to delete that cluster, but um, I'm gonna leave it going. Now, as I said, as long as you use the T2 micro, this is free tier and we're not gonna run these for long. So I'm just gonna leave mine running because I want to show you through some of the monitoring and the backup options when we get to that particular lesson in a couple of lessons time.